So, let's think about this. As an example, I'm going to give you some numbers, and the numbers don't come from thin air. They actually come from the syllabus, from an example that the syllabus wants you to know. It's going to consider, what if you were looking at this as kind of like going forward in time, as if you were just pumping air in, not just actually putting breaths in, and you were increasing the volume over time, yeah? What I could say then is if I'm increasing volume as time progresses, I'm not going to have dy and dx. One of the things that's changing will be v for volume. That means, how is the volume changing? And what I want to compare it to is how time is changing. Yeah. Now, dv and dt, I've arranged them like this, this over this, because I want to compare these two. I'm not going to put, you don't have to write this down, I'm not going to put dt on dv, because if you were explaining how something was changing over time, like say how fast a car was driving over as time progressed, what kind of units would you use? You're like, my car is traveling at what speed? How would you describe its speed? What units would you use? Kilometers per hour, meters per second, that's kind of thing. Now, listen carefully to what you just said, right? You said kilometers per hour. Your time unit was at the end. You said meters per second, the time unit's at the end. It's like this, right? Meters per second, kilometers per hour. Now that per is division, right? So the seconds, the hours, they belong on the bottom. They're the second thing that you're comparing, okay? Now, I'm going to give you a number here, and again, like I said, it comes from the syllabus. Let's imagine if instead of you putting, you know, one breath, two breaths, three breaths, you could actually just blow into the balloon at a constant rate, and the constant rate that this syllabus example is giving to you is millimeters cubed per, I'm pretty sure it's minute. Let me just double check because I wrote it down over here. Oh, no, it's seconds. Of course, because millimeters cubed are really small. Sorry. Okay. So, just a little side note here. Um, I've put this off on the side to indicate to myself, hey, this, these are the units that this thing is dealing with. Okay. Um, I haven't attached it to here because you would say the volume is a number and then you would attach the units on the side. So the derivative itself has no units, just like an integral. You know when, I, when we were doing area and volume, you'd work out the integral and you get a number at the end, and that thing you don't attach units to it. Okay, now, if that's how volume is changing, tell me some other things that were changing as you blew air into your balloon. Give me another value that's changing. Radius. <laughs> radius. So I could consider how the radius is changing over time. That works. What else is changing about the balloon? You see anything else that is increasing or decreasing? Color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, my balloon is clearly a little bit, it's got a bit of an identity problem here, okay? Apart from things that are limitations from me not having used the same balloon over and over again, what else do you notice that's, say, getting bigger? Surface area, Surface area is getting bigger, right? Okay. So these are things that we can all try and work out from this situation. Okay. Now here's my question for you. Let me just rub off this stuff that's irrelevant. If I know, if I state to you that the rate of change of the volume is this, how do I get from that to these things? What am I going to need to do here? Hmm. I need to connect the information that I've got with this information that I don't have through, well, how are volume and radius connected together? What, what knowledge do you have that connects the volume of a sphere to its radius? I think you know an equation, don't you? If we just think about volume and radius first, we'll come to area in a second. What would you say, wrong color, what would you say that volume equals to in, in, terms, of the, in terms of the radius? Think, we did this back in like year 7 and 8, right? Four thirds? Pi r cubed, very good. Now, this tells you, sorry, it's a really bad for, let's fix that, it's a bit better. This tells you a relationship between volume and radius that you can use to bridge this gap. You can use to bridge this gap. I want you to think back to when we learnt chain rule, right? When we learnt chain rule, we used it with y and x, and we introduced a new letter, like u, for example, okay? But we don't need to introduce any new letters here. All the letters are there, right? Have a look, have a think. I want to have dr on something, 
times something on dt. That'll get the dr and the dt in the right spots. Are you okay with that? Does that make sense? So what, if you have a look at all the information that I have here, what is a good candidate for going into these two spots? DV. DV. It's the only other piece of information I really have anything about, right? I could put DV here and I know exactly what that's equal to. I could put DV here and I don't know what this is equal to, but I can find out. Have a look at what we said was the relationship between volume and radius. What can I do to get to that? I can differentiate. Now because we've got all of these extra variables flying around, you can't just say I'm going to find the derivative because there's lots of derivatives. I've already written one, two, three, I'm about to write, oh no, four on the board, right? So what am I going to differentiate with respect to? What variable would make sense? If I'm starting from here. It's R, isn't it? This equation is all about R. So I'm going to differentiate with respect to R. Is that okay? What is the derivative? You can do the rules from here. Four, the threes are going to cancel, pi r, and the power reduces by one. You okay with that? Now, dv on dr, is that the thing that I want? It's not, is it? It's actually the, it's the reciprocal of what I want, right? So pardon me, I'm, we're going to come back to this guy in a second, but I need this space briefly. Instead of writing in that, in place of dr and dv, I'm going to put in its reciprocal. That's one on. 4 pi r squared. Are you okay with that? You see how I've used that factor of differentiation in here? What's dv on dt again? It's just a number. Yeah, it's a constant. Yeah? So now I can tidy this up just a little bit. I guess I'd write 35 on 2 pi uh, r squared. Okay, how's your brain so far? Does that make sense? What have we done here? We've taken a piece of information that we knew about how quickly air was going in, and then we used, well, we used some geometry, right? Um, then we used some calculus, then we used some more calculus, and now we've got a new rate of change, okay? 